Hello, Christine. How are you today? Hello. <laughs> I'm fine today, thank you. I'm still kind of almost sane. I have to say I'm struggling with the art of conversation at the moment because we're not really talking to that many people, but um, so <laughs> forgive me. It's, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, I just seem to be just sort of sh shouting at the children half the time um, <laughs> and trying to get them to encourage and stuff. Um, well, we've had off, you know, on our first uh, Q&A, which um, looking back, I wish I'd uh, brushed my hair at least. Uh, it, but the response was really, really good. And it was really lots of, uh, actually quite a few hairdressers, uh, uh, you know, signed in, put questions in, have been talking about, um, uh, you know, I was sort of thinking of doing the course and stuff. And, you know, that there's obviously that nervousness, there's what to do and stuff. So, so maybe in emails we can do more details but you know as i've mentioned before you know it's your background that's exactly what you did you know you, yeah. you, you, you did a course um started and went off you know i will start let, right so the first question i wasn't sure if i was meant to talk then <laughs> <laughs> Okay, first question. Your thumbs up. The first question, I'm see, I'm not putting my glasses on, so I can't see. <laughs> first question is from I think he's uh inane inane image, in an image, inane image. Um and his question is has working on the production on a production the size of HBO's The Nevers presented you with any challenges for, for you and your team? Oh my God, that's a really good question. Um, it really has. And I have to say, first and foremost, it was my first, it's, I, I, I kind of made a very conscious decision um, a couple of years ago to kind of look for a really good um, high-end TV show to do. Uh, and when my agent kind of came up with um, The Nevers, I mean, obviously because Joss Whedon is, is directing it, you know, the, the um, the, the knowledge of what it could be uh, was very tempting. And uh, what I've, um, I think what is so hard about doing the Nevers, um, and I don't even know if I should be talking about this at the moment, because obviously we, we have a, a non-disclosure thing, so I'm not gonna tell you anything about the plot line or anything, but the scale of it is, is huge. I mean, it is massive. Um, and also it, 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 we've got sort of, 10 episodes um we double we do something called double banking um whereby you might be doing two or three different episodes at a time um due to location or or, or, or um actor availability or wh whatever the situation is um and you kind of suddenly have to split your team into different areas and it's it's trying to kind of manage it, it sometimes feels when i'm doing the nevers that i'm at the end of a big film all the time um, and when I so when I say this what I mean is at the end of any big um, big film you kind of suddenly get all of these little scenes that haven't been shot and obviously the, the um, first AD is, is trying to kind of cram everything in so that we film everything that we have to film before we finish filming and um, working on Nevers it's a bit like that all the time it, the pace of it is incredible it's it's absolutely incredible it's fast um, you've got to have a really, really clear head all the time. Um, you know, you're expected to wear, as a designer, you're expected to wear many hats um, when you're doing a show like The Nevers. Um, and you're obviously overseeing what is coming up, as in prepping the next few episodes. <clears throat> you're making sure that you've got enough teams to accommodate however many units are running, you know, um, quite often two, sometimes it is, you know, three. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's, if, it's and, a lot. <laughs> and is it, is it obviously for some people that don't know, like it's, it's just like a film, it's not filmed in a chronological order. It's, it, it all depends on the location and what's happening. Uh, very much depends on the location uh, and what's happening. And also, you know, on how much, it, you know, um, Joss is writing it and directing um, a good a good few of the episodes, and he's showrunner and overseeing it. So I mean, you know, I think we're busy. I mean, our director is is wearing multiple hats, you know, and um, and and yeah, it's 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 hectic. 
No, it is. I know, but it's. I didn't really. But again, I, you know, not having the background, I didn't realise that it would be so. You know, not just we're doing this episode. We're, we're doing a multiple episodes because of the location. You, you're squeezing yeah. the location. Literally, yeah. you're maximising it as, as much as possible, which makes no, sense. Sorry, I, I, and also, sorry, I didn't actually answer your question. I, I, I got a sort of, um, I got frantic in, in my uh, how mad. It's what you can do. You it, know, was more, <laughs> it was more about filming chronologically. And um, no, we don't film chronologically. No, uh, no, I mean, I think that, that um, in most uh, forms, filming chronologically kind of, usually belongs to directors like Mike Lee, um, who improvise and the story um, unfolds as, as we're going along. And even then, you can't, you can't always... Um... Oh, that's interesting. No, I didn't know that. I mean, the, the, the second... Uh, there is a little, a, a little second question from Martin. I'm sure the by the way, as I'm doing this, I'm doing great. I'm just like, hello, kids. And yeah, she's not uh, 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 the second, A second question um, is from Martin, uh, was, uh, or, or is, does the budgeting process get easier with the uh, you know the amount of movies that you do? Um, does the budgeting process get easier? Um, not That'd really. Be a Kitty question. I think Kitty, would you like to answer this? Um, uh, no, it, it will never get easier because you know the budget. Even when I'm breaking down a budget, um, you have to. Or, I mean, what I've learned over the years is I'll break down a budget, I'll um, do my breakdown, work out what stunts I need, you know, how many different weeks I need for people. Um, you know, I've kind of, I've, I kind of work out what is probably the prosthetic side of it and then sort of hand that over to Christian so that he can do the budget on that. <clears throat> but to be quite honest, I, I, what I've learned over the years is, is with a budget, um, irregardless of how big or small it is, you should always have a contingency in there. Um, so for example, say if I've got a budget on a very low budget um, film, and I've got a budget of say 5,000, um, then I would uh, have a contingency of about 1,000. You know, if I'm on a really big budget film and I've got a budget of maybe 250,000, which sounds an awful lot, but you know, bearing in mind most weeks cost four and a half to 5,000, it's surprising how it gets eaten up. Um, if I've got a budget of 250,000, I'd probably have a 20,000 contingency that I'd build into it. And that's what I'd sort of discuss with the producers as well at the start, because obviously they need their, they need to know, you know, usually when a producer, does, when, I, when I arrive on a film, they'd have done a budget and they'll say, okay, um, you tell me what you want, we will tell you what, what we've got. But they, the way they break it down is they'll break it down into hair, wigs, um, uh, prosthetics, uh, um, consumables and things. And what I tend to do is I tend to kind of sort of like try to put it all together. So, so I am in charge of stealing a little bit off of, uh, you know, something. If, I, if, I, if I've got a little bit left over in my wigs budget, I can move into my consumables and things. You know, it's like on, the, on, the, on my current production, we get through so much dirt. I mean, so much dirt, we really do. Our budget for dirt is, is way up in, in uh, 15, 20,000. Uh, uh, you know, so you kind of sort of think, it is, it's, you just, you need to be prepared with a budget. And, and that's my best advice is that always have a bit of contingency. And, you know, explain to the producer as well that, that worst case scenario, this is what we'll spend. And being flexible. You don't want to keep I suppose it's be and again being flexible and and yeah you know trying to move some money from from one place to the other which hopefully um, I I'd, I'd like to think that producers or, or people you're dealing with understand that that flexible that movement rather than oh, saying yeah. no no that was for here only it wouldn't be uh, like that, it? Every, every department would do it do you know what I mean every department would do it and you know, if you think you're going to be in trouble, I mean, what I'll always do as well to safeguard um, myself and and my my lot. You know, you can get a really bad reputation if you go over budget um, on films. Part of the um, reason that you kind of get asked by the big studios to work, you know, obviously you sort of earn your spurs in this industry. But part of the reason as well is is that they know that you can handle the big budgets. You know, they know that you you know if they give you two hundred fifty thousand pounds of their money, you're not going to spend three hundred and fifty. You know, so you have to be really um, aware of where the money's going. But also, if you preempt a problem, 
And as I was saying, what I would always do as well is when I'm doing a budget, I'll, I will say this is on the condition that no new storylines come up that I'm not prepared for. You know, because they might suddenly bring up a sort of a storyline where somebody's got a horn growing out the centre of his head and he's in sort of every every single shot. So you, you don't know, do you know what I mean? So you just safeguard yourself all the time. No, no, that makes Emails, sense. you know what I mean? It's, it talk, people talk about having an email trail. Um, and I used to really hate that thought. But that's, you have to kind of make sure that you put everything into an email. Just so you can follow it up and show them. No, no, I think that that's, makes a lot of sense in, in, in lots of areas in, in life at the moment. Well, any time, any given time. Um, the last question of today uh, yeah. is from um, Grayson. Um, oh, our, Grayson. Our, yeah, our, yeah, Australian oh. Grayson. Um, Hello, Grayson. She's, uh, she's sent uh, quite a few questions in, but the one I, I just picked out one of them, but it was, um, how do you keep your knowledge up to date in what seems like an industry that's constantly evolving? Uh, again, that's, that's a good good question. I mean, you, you're not always going to have time to go on continuous courses to update yourself. We quite often get sent products to sort of try and everything. Um, so we're constantly being sent new things, new types of skin illustrators, you know, some that are activated by water as opposed to IPA. You, 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 you kind of, um, you know, Sean Richard brought out a lovely range of, of um, products that, that are really, really good to use as well. Um, but, you know, you kind of get to test them. You know, I, you know luckily enough, I, I do get sent stuff that I sort of test um, and, and use that way. Uh, but I have to say that quite often um, what will happen is you know the products that work. And it's like when we all started using Skin Illustrators, you know, it, it took a long time for the industry to kind of understand how to use them. And in that interim period, in that kind of grey area, I suppose, um, you know, we still kind of did what we knew worked. We always felt confident enough as to how to dilute down the skin illustrators and how to kind of sort of do all of that. And I mean, it's likewise, I mean, the thing that changes a lot is um, wig glue. You know, everybody's got a favourite wig glue. Um, and, you know, there's always different ways of using it and there's different problems you might have with it, you know, build up of, of it and everything. Um, and you kind of just, you just have to sort of, I, t I tend to kind of try to experiment with stuff, um, maybe not on my main actor. <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll, I'll quite often kind of give it to Charmaine to try out or give it to the girls, you know, sort of try, to try out. And we'll do little tests with it. We test with it before we put it anywhere near any of the actors. We'll test it and see how it, how it works. I think it's also, I mean, for me in, in um, I think it's having confidence to, to sort of, you know, when someone presents you with a product or, or, or something you know, to do, to have that confidence and say, well, actually, oh, I don't know how to do that. I remember when you've done um, the boot camp and stuff and you, I can't remember what, what look it was, but one of the students and he was like, wow, it's brilliant. Like, how did you do that? I never, you know, I'd never thought of it. So not, you know, you can't be, you know, not everyone can have, well, no one can have all the knowledge. You know, I think it's having that confidence to say, oh, actually, I never knew that. That's interesting. Well, I think it's, it's another thing that's kind of very, uh, very paramount in what we do is you, you never kind of have all the answers for everything. And sometimes I feel it's, it's like when I first did hairdressing, I always remember because I was never taught how to cut hair originally. And when I was finally taught the proper way to cut hair, I knew so, by then I knew so many shortcuts of what I could and couldn't do to hair. You know, it's almost like working out how you make that all work for yourself. Um, and I think sometimes it's the same with makeup. You know, sometimes you get so bogged down in what is the right way to do things that you kind of forget that actually you don't necessarily need to do it the right way. You just need to do it the way that works. Yeah. I think it's one of the good things where you always say, well, again, if I, if I remember correctly, was, you know, like... Uh, um, a lip brush or a so-and-so eye brush. It's like, you know, this is oh. a makeup brush. That's yeah. it, you know, and if you can use it for the eyes, for the lips, for the ears, for whatever, use it, you know. Yeah, no, I've always, I've always hated people using terminology on specific brushes. <laughs> That's one of my pet hates, is a brush. Um, uh, well, listen, well, you know, um, not so long today, so uh, thank you very much. What are you doing for the rest <laughs> of the day? Is it exciting? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, as the options are there, I suppose. I'm pretty much tied to the house, so I suppose I can see if I can 
I was going to say tidy up my neighbour's house, but I'm not allowed in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I listen, think Chris, well, thank you very much. Know, and, uh, we'll get some more questions coming your, your way and we'll have a little go then. Yeah, and get some from, from our, um, our graduates as well. Oh, kitty's back. Um, it, it's lovely to hear from Grayson. Yeah, no, we'll do, we'll do. There are definitely a few of them. Um, okay, lots of love. Talk to you later. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.